young man. Aren't you going to say something? Shake? Atta girl. That's fine. Bye. We always make a reduction for our permanent temporary guests. Well, that's very nice of you. Put your name and address here. Billy Lee? Billy Lee, you wake up! Shh. Oh, just to rest. Well, I thought you'd taken root. Go on up to 104 and get it aired out. And see if Mabel's dusted, too. Yes, Moon! I swear, I believe that boy's got nigger blood in him somewhere. <laughs> you don't have to go to all this trouble. It won't take a minute. I suppose you're a salesman. You might say I'm in social work. I've come to do what I can for the town. The integration problem. Oh, that. But that's all over. I mean, they've got ten niggers enrolled already in the school. And they're starting Monday. Yes, I know. Uh, do you think it's right? No. I sure don't. Neither does nobody, but it's the law. Who's law? It's okay. Come up now. Do you want Billy Lee to tote your bag? Oh, no, it's not. Suit yourself. Right this way. Sam, stop it. You're going to tear my robe. Oh, honey, for heaven's sake, please. Sam, stop it. Cut it out. Come on. Anything you want, just let me know. Well, thank you very much. Oh, there is one thing. What's that? Privacy. I'd like to take care of the room myself, if you don't mind. I guess we can arrange that. Good. We're going to be friends, aren't we? Don't see any reason why not. Stop 
that Karen out right this instant. You hear me now. Well, looky here, Peep and Tom. Why, Sam Griffin, you haven't got the modesty of a hog. I have to. You want to talk to me that way, honey? Oh, shut up. She's mad because I won't give her a kiss. Now you listen, Sam. I got a new guest right down the hall. And he's a gentleman. Well, so am I. I just got this terrible case of sex appeal. Anything I can do. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Sorry to interrupt your meditation, but your root beer is ready. Man, you're me. Hi. Hi. You, uh, authorized to make business transactions? Sir? I give you two dollar bills. You give me a cup of coffee and 19 dimes for the telephone. All right. I flip you double or nothing. Just put 10 cents on the counter. Boy, you're the meanest girl on the face of the earth. Be careful, mister. She's liable to bite your head off. Thank you very much. See you at school. Are you really the meanest girl on the face of the earth? That's what people tell me. Oh, they're wrong. You don't look mean at all. Thank you. You go to school around here? Uh-huh. I didn't know they had a college in Caxton. Oh, they don't. You don't go to high school, do you? Mm-hmm. My, my, they do grow things fast here, don't they? You know, Miss, I've heard an awful lot about Southern hospitality. The question is, does it really exist? Well, sure, I guess so. No, I mean, really. See, here's the thing. I've just moved into Caxton, and I'm anxious to meet some young people here. But I don't have any contacts. Isn't that a sad story? Oh, hi, Dad. I'll check you later. Late again? Sorry, Al. That's OK, Dad. How's it going, Tom? Oh, all right, I guess. Kind of surprised, though. Looks like the school's gonna open without any trouble. Well, I hope so. Goodbye, Mr. Thanks. Goodbye, honey. Nice having you work for me. See you later, Ted. Do you think it's all right for a girl my age to go out with older men? Hmm? Oh, never mind. Hi, Mom. Sorry, honey. Well, you could have called. I had a lovely roast. I know. I'm a terrible husband. Oh, sit down. I'll fix you something. What's wrong? Well, it isn't anything, actually, but I had a kind of funny phone call a few minutes ago, and it upset me. Well, who was it, a salesman? No. Somebody making a survey or something. Well? Well, he wanted to know what I thought of my daughter sitting in a classroom with a bunch of Negroes. What'd you say? Well, I didn't exactly know what to say, but, well, I told him the truth, that I didn't like it. Did you give a name? I don't remember. Kramer. That's his name, Adam Kramer. Makes sense, too. The best sense I've heard in a year. Where's the coffee? Sit down, Dad. I'll get you some. First thing you get around this house, you gotta ask for it. What's the matter with you? Mad because we got somebody in town with a little gumption? Afraid you're gonna get showed up? Look, I'm tired. From what? Sitting around on your dead rump all day? Oh, Dad. It's the truth. Everybody knows it. River could bust loose and flood the whole damn town. What do you think he'd do? Write editorials. It takes work and muscles, boy, to stop a flood. And that's what we got on our hands, a great big black flood. You cut out that kind of talk in front, Ella. Well, I guess that's what happens when you get old and sick. People treat you like dirt, spit on you, waiting around for you to die. All right, let's forget it. Ruth, get my medicine. Your husband's doing his best to give me a heart attack. What about you, Ella? What do you think about sitting in a room with a bunch of big buck niggers? Ella thinks the same way I do. 
She doesn't like it, but it's a law. Can't you get that through your thick skull? A law! Well, what has he got his back up about? Good morning. Good morning. How's your social work coming along? We're off to a fine start. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, Mother yeah. Lambert. My, but you're looking just as pretty as ever this morning. Give me a little kiss. Oh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hell, yeah. Cut that out now. Oh, there. Is this the gentleman you were telling us about? Mr. Adam Kramer, Mr. and Mrs. Griffin. Happy to know you, Adam. Pleased to meet you. Hope we didn't disturb you any last night. Oh, no, no, not a bit. Had your breakfast yet? No, I haven't. Well, neither are we. We're just headed down to the palace. If you'd care to join us, you're welcome, isn't he, honey? Yeah, sure. Come on, treat on Sam Griffin. You'll convince me. Woo-wee. Gonna be another scorcher. Just down the street here, Adam. Not much to look at, but the food, terrible. Didn't make too many demands on you last night, did I? Huh? Sam. I didn't hear. How do you do there? Good morning, Gertie. Let's have three orders of prime and lamb covered with water, soil, and a little sumo's on the side. Uh, scrambled eggs and coffee. How about you, Adam? Sam. Uh, Make it three. Don't forget the porter's oil. <laughs> Kids are every time. Where are you from, Adam? Los Angeles. L.A., no kidding. Well, that's by his hometown. Oh, small world, huh? How about that, honey? Say, you two ought to be thick as thieves. I was in California once, Pomona, the fairgrounds. Oh, yeah. I was pushing pens, same as I'm doing here. Made 300 bucks a day. I take it you're a salesman. Oh, that's a fancy way of putting it. Pitchman would be more like it. Say, I'm working a dime store over in Farragut today. Why don't you come on over? It's only 40 miles. I'd like to. Your work sounds fascinating. What's your line, Mr. Kramer? Social reform. Hmm. Be in town long? Quite a while, yes. You? Oh, all summer. We like it here, don't we, honey? Sure, Sam. Jackson's a fine place. Real fine people. Something wrong, Vi? Uh, no, Sam. I, uh, I got a headache. I think I'll, I'll go back to the room and lie down. I'll go with you, baby. No, please. No, no, no. It's all right. Don't get up. It's a pleasure to have met you, Mrs. Griffin. We're going to be friends, aren't we? Well, heck, you're friends now. I'll be all right, Sam. Sure. Yeah, she's something, ain't she? Very attractive. Huh? Wonderful woman, Adam. Really wonderful. Hate to leave her alone so much of the time. She kind of gets bored. Well, if there's anything I can do, just... Uh... Oh, no. <laughs> Farag is only a one-night deal. That's the kind of absence that makes the heart grow fonder, if you get what I mean. Where are them eggs? <laughs> Hi. Howdy. Are you the driver? Sure am. You know where Nigger Town is? Yes, sir. Can you take me there? Take me to 22 Myrtlewood Lane. Are you through here? For the moment.
Who are you? My name's Adam Kramer. Your housekeeper said this would be a good time for us to talk. Well, what's on your mind? Uh, quite a bit, sir. I think you'll be interested. Well, you tell me all about whatever it is you're selling in a letter. Keep on working him, right? Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Shipman, I'm not selling anything. Then what are you after? A little courtesy, for one thing. Mr. Shipman, I've traveled all the way from Washington, D.C. to talk to you. Washington, huh? Yes, sir, D.C. Well, let's uh, go over here in the shade. Good. <laughs> Lovely place you have. Thank you, thank you. Well, now, what is it you want to know? Well, sir, you see, I represent the Patrick Henry Society. And what we'd like to know is just this, how you stand, whether you're for integration or against it. Well, that's a stupid question, young man. I'm a southerner. <laughs> sit down, sit down. Thank you. See, I was born and raised in these parts. <clears throat> so were my folks. That is, you're against it. Well, of course I'm against it. What's the matter with you? Well, I'd just like to get it straight. You see, sir, our organization agrees with you. We believe this ruling to be one of the greatest wrongs the government has ever perpetrated. Yeah, it's a shame, all right, but what can we do? Fight. We did. We lost. It's a law now. Whose law? I thought this was a democracy, and I thought a democracy was based on the collective will of the people. Sure, of course, sure. And is it the collective will of the people that Negroes should be allowed to mix with whites right under the same roof? Study with them, eat with them, maybe even sleep with them? Is it the collective will of the people that niggers should be allowed to take over the whole world? Because that's what's going to happen, Mr. Shipman. You think it can be stopped? With your help, I'm sure of it. Legally. Start talking, my boy. Blow off, everyone. Here's the bathroom. How many times you go out in that shirt? Well, you want to look nice, don't you? Hey, man, Dick, integration. Black and white, how about that? Why don't you shut up? And turn that junk off. What you talking about junk? That's music, man. I said turn it off. Joey. I'm sorry, Ma. I'm just bushed. Hey, you really going to make him go to the white school tomorrow? Why, well, I'm not making him go. Am I, Joey? No, Ma. Well, it's too bad I ain't old enough. I wouldn't be scared, that's all. Who's scared? You are. Man, you know what you ought to do? I'll tell you what you ought to do. Get yourself a gun. Play it cool, see? First gray stud looks at you sideways. Blam! Blam, 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 blam. You just stop. I don't think Daddy would approve of this kind of thing going on. I know Mr. Shipman wouldn't approve of this kind of thing going on in his car. I'm not going to bore you with a long sermon. I just want to let you know that I know how you feel, every one of you. I know because I can see it in your faces. Be strong, children. Not muscle and pride strong. Man strong. Let your strength be shown in meekness. And you win this fight, not only for yourself, but for all our people. Let us pray. O oh Lord, in thy mercy, protect these ten lambs. 
when they walk in the valley of the shadow, comfort them. And when they falter, give them strength. When they despair, give them hope. And let them do thy will. Amen. I said, you Negroes gonna cause some of us niggas to get killed. your invaders. Not much of an army, is it? tell you something right here and now. It may be hot tonight, but it's gonna get hotter for a whole lot of people. This here little town's gonna burn. What I mean, it's gonna burn the conscience of the country and put forth a light that everyone and everybody's gonna see and feel. This town I'm talking about, Caxton. Yeah! People, something happened today. 10 Negroes. Went into the Caxton High School and sat with the white children there. Nobody stopped them. Nobody turned them out. And you know what they're saying that means? They're saying that you all don't give a darn whether the whites mix with the blacks because you didn't fight against it. Well, I say, how can somebody fight what he doesn't see? They've kept the facts away from you. They've cheated and deceived every one of you. 
They filled your heads with filthy lies and kept you in the dark so that when you finally do wake up, why, we're sorry, but it's just too late. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm associated with the Patrick Henry Society, which is an organization dedicated to giving the people the truth. What I'm going to tell you is going to make your blood boil. Because I'm going to show you that the way this country is going to go depends entirely and wholly and completely on you. Yeah. Now, you all know that there was peace and quiet in the South before the NAACP started stirring up trouble. But what you don't know is that this so-called advancement of colored people is now and has always been nothing but a communist front headed by a Jew who hates America and doesn't make any bones about it either. Well, the commies didn't waste a second. They knew only too well, friends, that the quickest way to cripple a country is to mongrelize it. So they poured all the millions of dollars the Jews could get for them into this one thing, desegregation. They went to the courts. Now, Judge Silver, who is a Jew and is known to have leftist leanings. Who says so? The record says so. Look it up. Abraham Silver, for one thing, belongs to the Quill and Pen Society, which receives its funds indirectly from Moscow. So what did the judge do? Went right ahead and ordered integration for the Caxton High School. Your mayor and the governor could have stopped it, but they didn't have the guts. That's right. <laughs> All right. Now, you may think the problem is simply whether we're going to allow 10 Negroes to go to our schools. That's only a small part of it. I'm in a position to know because the Patrick Henry Society has studied the whole thing. The real problem, whether you like it or not, is whether you're going to sit back and let desegregation spread throughout the entire South. And it's an indisputable fact that there could be no other result. The Negroes will literally and I do mean literally, control the South. The vote will be theirs. You'll have black mayors and black policemen the way they do in Chicago and New York already. Like is not a black governor and black doctors to deliver your babies, if they find time, that is. And that's the way it'll be. Did you ever stop to think about that? When you let those ten enter your school, did you? Now let me ask you. Do you people want niggers taken over? No. no. Yeah. no. And are you willing to fight this thing down to the last ditch and keep fighting until it's over? Yeah. And I'm willing to fight with you. Why, Mr. Kramer? Why? Because I'm an American, sir, and I love my country. And I'm willing to give my life, if that be necessary, to see that my country stays free, white, and American. <laughs>
I don't know. Junior, what is it? I don't know. Come on, let's get out of here. Get out of here, quick. Nigga, you're not going anywhere. What's the trouble? No trouble. You looking for trouble? No, look, no, sir. We on our way to the house. Just on our way to the house. Please don't do it. We haven't done anything. Who can either of us ride through Texas? Nigga, there's a highway to Hobbs. Yeah, I know there is, but... Well, look, if you know there is, how can you know our street there and all that stuff? What's the you folks? We haven't done anything. You're dirty in the far streets. Yeah. Look at the monkeys in the back. Yeah. Oh, damn you. Please. 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 All right, I'm sorry. We're grown. That's what you say. I figure you're lying, nigga. I don't lie to nobody. Oh. Talk back to me, nigga. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Come on, kill your skin. Come on, one step. One move. You people don't want to spend this night in jail. You get out of here now. In that car and get out of here as fast as you can. All right, all right. What's going on here? Oh, nothing, Sheriff. The good citizens was just having a little fun, that's all. What kind of fun? The best kind. Attacking Negroes. He's lying, Sheriff. We didn't attack anybody. Oh, oh I know. No. There seems to be a difference of opinion here. Opinion's got nothing to do with it, Sheriff. The fact is, a family was terrorized on the streets of Caxton. Family hell, it was just a bunch of coons, yeah. Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Who did this here terrorizing? Do you want me to arrest everybody, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tom. How are you making it, boy? Hello, Vern. You met, uh... Yes. Yes, I've had the pleasure. How are you? What do you want? Nothing. This is in the way of business. You do run ads, don't you? They meet our standards? <laughs> By God, Tom, you're still the crankiest man of a morning I ever did see. No, sir. Doesn't meet our standards. I'd suggest that I you... suggest you get the hell out of this office, Kramer. No, just a minute. No, no, it's all right, Vern. Mr. McDaniel's upset about what happened last night. He holds me responsible. You are responsible. Well, I'm sorry you feel that way about it, sir. Because you and I are fighting on the same side. I'll meet you later, Vern. He's taking you in, has he? Now, look, Tom. Kramer may be young, and he may be an outsider and all that. But by damn, you've got to admit he's on the right track. You heard his speech last night. Yes, I heard it. I saw what happened afterwards, too. Boy, don't prove a thing. Probably that that Negro was uppity. That Negro wasn't uppity. He was just passing through town, which is his legal right. Oh, now, come on. Tom, come on. You're just mad because it took somebody from out of town to show us how we've been falling down on our job. Well, I was mad in the beginning, too. But there's no two ways about it. This here thing has got to be stopped. And it's got to be stopped right now. How? By attacking Negroes in the streets? If that's what it takes, yes. Man. Do you know what you're saying? Yes, I know what I'm saying, but I don't think you do. I'm saying that we fought this thing fair and above board, and it didn't get us anywhere. Now we're going to have to fight it their way. There's nothing to fight anymore, Vern. The law says we've got to have an integration. I believe in obeying the law. Kramer apparently doesn't. I don't like him. I don't trust him. And I'm certainly not gonna run his stinking ad. Doggone. Ain't you forgetting something, Tom? Well, what's that? Well, I own the controlling stock in the messenger. You're working for me. That's the way it is? That's the way it is.
Adam Kramer, your neighbor. What do you want? A cup of coffee, a little conversation, maybe. Just a minute. Hi. Hello. Sam said I should drop in on you. Oh? Said he was spending the night in Farrak. I thought maybe you could use a little company. Well, if not, I'll go on back to my room. I think that'd be a pretty good idea. Is that what you want me to do? Yes. Why? Well, look, I'm getting ready for bed. I, I, I... 10 I thought you were a night owl. Come on, please, Oh, I'll... come on. Sam would be very put out with you if he heard you weren't hospitable to a friend. I don't consider you a friend, Mr. Kramer. Unkind, definitely unkind. Just one little old cup of coffee. Okay. Why did you say that? Say what? But I wasn't a friend. I don't know. Look, I, I'm tired. It's hot. I, I, I told you. The way you act, you're not afraid of me, are you? No. Don't have to bite my head off. How do you stand it, anyway? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you know, this town. I should think you'd get awfully lonely, especially with Sam leaving you half the time. Stand it just fine, Mr. Kramer. You were born with that chip on your shoulder and somebody put it there. Look, if you don't like my personality, you don't have to subject yourself to it. What are you after, anyway? To which you'll have to go. Mr. Kramer, I didn't know you were a religious man. You have to admit it's dramatic. So is a lynching. That's old-fashioned. Otherwise, you wouldn't mind? Mrs. Griffin, that's a terrible thing to say. These people like me. I'm here to save lives, not to take them. I'm the Empress of China. I know what you're doing here, but why? Who can say? Great times call forth great men. And you're a great man? Not yet. You don't want to talk politics, do you? I've already told you all you need to know about me. You despise me, but you're attracted to me, isn't that right? Isn't it? If you don't mind, I'm going to take off my coat. It's getting awfully hot in here. Aren't you hot? I hope you know these bulbs are giving off a lot of heat. Look at the difference. See? Woo -wee! We're down five degrees, I'll bet. You're not very comfortable, are you? It does get lonely for you, doesn't it, Vi? I know it does. I feel that way myself a lot of the times. I almost go crazy sometimes because there isn't anybody who feels things the way I do. I think how wonderful it would be to meet a person like that and be with that person. Not for long. Just a little while. Just a little while. No. Adam, please. Please, 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 what? You want me to leave? Adam. You want me to leave? Adam. You want me to leave? Adam. 
You want it, you know you want it. Well, that settles it. We're taking Ella out of school tomorrow. We're doing nothing of the kind. Well, Tom, what's got into you? I don't know what you're thinking anymore. I'm not sure I do. Ruth, tell me something. How do you feel about this question? Well, I'm, I'm not sure I know what you mean. About integration. Well, I, I think it's a terrible thing. Why? Why? Because it just isn't right, that's why. Tom, are you in favor of it? Yes. Well, why didn't you... Because I didn't know. I don't think I knew really till now. One thing Adam Kramer's done for us, he's made us face ourselves. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure of anything. Except this is right. And we've got to face up to it. He's smart at all, hasn't been dared me to take him to jail. Yeah, but you know he didn't have anything to do with that bombing. Maybe you know. I don't. How are you, Vern? I might as well tell you right off the bat, I don't cotton to any of this. I strung along with you because I figured you were smart, but smart people don't end up here. Oh, I'm not ending up here, Vern. This is just a beginning. Never underestimate the value of a jail sentence. Remember Socrates, Lenin, Hitler. The bail is $10,000. What if I don't put up the money? Get it, Vern. I don't want your money yet. Haven't I told you that? Where are you going to get it? Neeson, Mr. Carey, Mr. Dongan, for what they done for me. Our friend Vern Shipman offered to get me out of jail. I told him no. I told him, look you here, the people will see to it. <laughs> now listen, he's a good man, but he didn't believe me. I want to know I'm mighty glad to show him I was right. He knows for sure now the people of Caxton won't stand still for no injustice. Yeah. What the sheriff thought was that I was responsible for the dynamiting up in the Badlands. Why, I couldn't hardly believe he was serious. I said to him, Sheriff, I said, whoever planted that bomb, it wasn't nobody in the Patrick Henry Society. We got brains enough to know. A killing a nigger preacher and blowing up a church can do us nothing but harm. Throwing a scare into the niggers is good. But we got to be very, very careful. Right? Yeah, that's right. Now, I ain't condemning anybody. Whoever planted that bomb was doing what he thought was right. But he was wrong. I hope you all see that now and go on acting according to the orders of the society. 
Well, I don't know anything about that. But I know one thing. Ain't gonna be one solitary nigger gonna have enough guts to step into our school now. It's all over. How are things? Okay, I guess. Good. How did you do in uh, Farragut? Sell many, what is it, uh, pens? Well, I'm glad to hear it. Is there something you want to see me about, Sam? I'll tell you the truth, I'm kind of pooped. I thought maybe. Look, Adam, I know this ain't none of your business, and I got no right bothering you with it. But I got to talk to somebody. I just got to. I'll go crazy if I don't. What is it, Sam? What's the matter? She's gone. Bye, she's gone. Let me run out. What happened? I don't know. I, I got back from Farragut about 2 o'clock. A present for her. I got up to the room, she was gone. Just a note saying she'd love me, but was no good for me. I should forget her. Oh, I'm really very, very sorry. Do you have any idea why she'd do a thing like that? Yeah, I think maybe I can guess part of the reason. Oh. I never told anyone this, but, but I consider you a friend, Adam. Before him advice, she, well, she knew a lot of men. It was like a disease with it. Doctors got a name for it, but they can't cure it alone. And I'm advised, I fell in love with her. I knew she was a good woman. I thought maybe I could help her. Five years we've been happy. Now this, I figure she got in some trouble. What sort of trouble? Man trouble. Likely some fella come along, caught her a weak moment, she... What do you think, Adam? You think that could be it? Well, uh, it's possible, I guess, but I, I just can't bring myself to believe it of Mrs. Griffin. She doesn't seem the type, you know what I mean? It was a man. But who? You! Oh, Sam. Don't bother thinking up a lot of lies. I know what happened. This is an old hotel. The walls are thin. Mrs. Lambert heard you. I wasn't going to deny it, Sam. The reason I didn't tell you before was was because I didn't want to hurt you any more than you've been hurt already. Really, honest, that's the truth. Blame me if you want to, but... Sam, I'm going to level with you. It was a lot my fault. Now, sure, I won't pretend that it was. And I went to your room just to say goodnight. And, and, and we were talking, you know, j just talking. And, and I don't know, suddenly everything started to go wrong. Can you understand? I understand. So I, I slept with her. Okay, I admit it. But you've got to know this. No matter how much you blame me, and hate me, and, 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 and want to shoot me. It wasn't all my fault. And there's another thing. Uh, Mrs. Griffin said I wasn't the first. I mean, since you've been married, she's slept with plenty of others. And she says she knew it didn't matter because, because you'd never catch on. Sam, I'm forcing myself to tell you this. It's the truth. <laughs> your calling, boy. You'd have made a fine pitch man. You know just the right way to work on people's weak spots. But you know something? I'm going to find her and I'm going to get her back. And when I do, we'll be closer than ever. So in a way, you've really done us a big favor, friend. You know something? We're in the same line, you and me. We're both selling something. When I've been at it longer, I can see where you're making mistakes. And right now, those mistakes are beginning to pile up on you. And a little while, they're going to smother you. Get out of here. I've been studying your pitch. It's not bad. You've got technique. But you know what's wrong? You're too clever, Adam. You've got no room in your head for intelligence. Because if you were intelligent, you'd be able to see that you started something you can't control. You think you're the boss now? Wake up, boy. That mob's the boss. What do you know, you big boob? Did you tell them to blow up the church? I'm sick of listening to your rave. Now get out of here before I pull the trigger. Oh, people are wonderful. 
You couldn't pull that trigger if your life depended on it. Because deep down inside, you're gutless, Adam. You know you're gutless. That's why you're doing this, to prove to yourself that you're not. I'll give you five. If you're not out of here by then, I'll pull the trigger. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. See what I mean, boy? Of course, you never want to be too sure of anything, either. Rule of the trade. Get away from me. Get away from me. No, boy. I don't think I'll do that. I think I'll stick around for a while. You won't see me likely, but I'll be here. I always did like fireworks. Green? That's right. My name is McDaniel. I think we've met once. I'm the editor of the newspaper. You come here to gloat, mister. Get on back to town. Put in the paper. Us niggas give up. You want to kill any more of us. Ah, Mr. Green, I know you have no reason to trust me, and I have no right to expect you to. But I'm on your side. Yeah. Please. Please believe me. I understand how you feel. I know it's hard. And I can't promise you that nobody else will get hurt. Maybe they will. I don't know. But you mustn't give up now. Your boy here and the other children have got to go to school this morning. It means everything. That's easy to say, but what have you got to lose, white man? My job, my home, maybe my family. Is that enough for you? Joy, don't try to stop me. Pop, you know he's right, and so do I. We can't give up now. We'd better hurry. This will be okay. Thank you very much. Come on. seen you, McDaniel, and we want an explanation. Now, we're waiting. Please, get out of my way. Hold it! What do you want? Like the man said, an explanation. Yeah, you tell us, McDaniel. How come you walked that bunch of black niggers to our white school? I don't see anything I do is any business of yours. We figured you was against all this. And we seen you taking them jigs to school. We got kind of a surprise, see? That's why we figure you ought to do some talking. Yeah, what do you got to say for yourself now? Which one of them niggers paid you off? It ain't polite not to answer a civil question. Abner here wants to know who paid you to betray your people. Yeah, let's teach him a lesson now. Why don't you get 15 or 20 more people, Carrie? Then you'll feel really safe. 
Teach him, Bart. You shut your mouth, nigger lover. You're awful good with the questions. How are you with the answers? Where were you when that preacher was killed, Carrie? Shut up, or you're gonna get the same thing. Where were you? already lost it, Tom. They did a pretty good job, didn't they? <laughs> so I'm all right. It's all right. You better go home, honey. It's late. We mustn't upset your father. He's going to be all right. I'll be along in a little while. I'm sorry, honey. Don't be. I'm not. Not in the least. It's the best thing you've ever done, and I'm proud of you. I wish I could tell you that I know why you did what you did, or why you feel the way you do, but I can't lie to you, Tom. I don't believe in integration, but I believe in you. And if this means so much to you, that you're willing to risk everything, even your own life for it, then I know it must be right. So I'm going to try to understand. I'm going to try very hard, darling. I only ask you to give me a little time. I love you, honey. Tell me it's not too late for us. It isn't. It never is. Wait. Maybe you'd better get the doctor now. Well, how is he? Haven't you gone deaf to ask you a question? Well? He has four broken ribs and... And what? Internal injuries and he... And he lost his eye. Well, he was lucky. Lucky? Yes, in my day, to strung a man up for doing what he done. And I'd have been on the end of the rope, too. What's the matter with him, anyhow? How am I going to face my friends? I never was so embarrassed in my life. Oh, shut your filthy, stinking mouth! If you're interested in saving your father's life, you better listen and listen carefully. I'm going to have to say some things I don't want to say. The men who beat up Mr. McDaniel this morning are desperate. You understand? Desperate. You saw what they did. Now, the reason for that was not to me. Never mind the reason. Just understand this. They'll kill your father if we don't do something. They'll go right into that hospital. And there'll be so many of them. The sheriff won't know what to do. They'll blow his head off. So listen carefully. If you want to save your father's life, this is what you're going to have to do. Man, the world is shaking this today. She wants to study frogs, man. I don't know. Oh, you're just afraid to touch them, that's all. I don't know about you, but I can't tell them apart. Get out.
Excuse me, are you Joy Green? That's right. Well, I'm Ella McDaniel, Tom McDaniel's daughter. Oh, I heard about what happened yesterday. I hope he's better, is he? Yes, he's a lot better. I wish you'd thank him for us, miss. He did a real fine thing. He's a fine man. I know. Well, better get going. The bell's about to ring. Oh, wait a second. I... Uh, I wonder if you'd do me a favor. Sure, if I can. Oh, well, it isn't much. Well, you see, I'm working down the storage room, and I've got to get some things. And, well, I could use a little help. Well, I'll have to ask the same off. Wait right oh, here. Oh, I spoke off. to her. Oh, she doesn't mind. It, it'll just take a few minutes. Uh, I just want you to kind of help me with some things. Well, okay. Well, come on. Let's go. Come on. Uh, wait here a second until I put the other light on. Okay. Miss McDaniel? Miss McDaniel? <laughs> that does it. What's the matter? John, you want to get it to beat him? What happened? happened. Just Danny, we don't know what you're talking about. Tell us, what happened? Nigger, try to rape a white girl. Wait, Watch it. Nigger, you know the one I called Joe Green? Happened 20 minutes ago. Ella McDaniel, you know her, the fellow who's in the hospital's daughter. I knew it would happen. Who is that fellow? Principal's office. They got him locked up there. Well, this is precisely what we've been afraid of, isn't it? Are we going to do something about it? You're damn right. All right, go and get every member of the society you can find. You can feel right now. Come to meet here as quickly as they can. Right now. What happened at the school, and they'll come. Come. Danny, you go on back. Round up as many kids as you can. Buck ahead, guarantee. This better work. It will. If you keep your mouth shut, if you don't start thinking on your own anymore. And McDaniel's gonna talk. I know it. Probably so, after what you did to him, you idiot. What are you gonna do? End this thing. But how? This is the last question I want to hear from you. From now on, I'll do all the thinking, understood? Understood? Now get out of here and get up some people fast. Hello, Vern. Adam. I've got some news for you. Tom Layella, tell us once again exactly what happened. I know it's hard for you to talk, but this is a very serious charge you've made. We've got to get our facts straight. You understand that, don't you? Ella, please. I told you. Ella, why did you want those pads at that particular time? Because we were out. I understand that, but why didn't you have Miss Zeefrey get one of the boys to do it for you? Oh, I don't know. I'd like to be excused now, if you don't mind. Very well, Miss Siegfried, you're excused. Wait a minute. Ella, is there any more you want to tell us? All right, you can go. I called your house, but your mother isn't there. You want me to call her at the hospital? Perhaps in that case, Miss Siegfried will drive you home. I don't believe it. I don't believe any part of it, do you? I don't know what to think. If it had been any other girl, I'd say she was lying. But Tom McDaniel's daughter? Oh, I don't care whose daughter. 
We both know Joey Green is too smart to do anything so stupid. Ella is lying. Well, doesn't much matter now. It's her story. Convince any jury. Humboldt boy said he saw Green sneak down after. I'm afraid we're beaten. Hello, give me the sheriff. Right away. Go get Joey Green. Hello, Rudy. Rudy, this is Holly Pat. Now listen carefully. Once you get as many men together as you can to get over to school right away, we got trouble with one of the students. Yes, Rudy, one of the colored students. Hurry! Rudy, we've got a mob outside. Lock the door. And don't be frightened. I just talked to Sheriff Parkhouse. He'll be here in a minute. There's nothing to worry about. I didn't do it, Mr. Patton. I know you didn't, Joey. Exactly five minutes. If that nigger ain't out here by then, we're coming in to get him. Is that right? Joey, how would you explain it? I think somebody must have put her up to it. It's the only thing I can think. Adam Kramer. You're on our side, aren't you, Mr. Patton? Yes, Joy, I am. Only you figure we're whipped now. One minute, Patton. Remember, no violence. We gave Sheriff Parkhouse our promise to bring him to jail. We're not a mob, we're a citizen's committee. You tell him, Carrie. Remember, no violence. There isn't any need for it. Don't worry. They'll see what the cause. They'll see how we take care of it. Don't Come worry. on, let's go get the out. Out. Oh, out. I wouldn't bother with that, Mr. Patton. I think Sheriff Parkhouse is going to be a little late. Sure, you come with me. My car's in the back. I'll drive you to Farragut. No, that's what they want us. Joey. <laughs> Did you people want to talk to me? You Joseph Green? That's right. You admit you tried to rape one of our white girls today? No, I don't. What do you mean, no, you don't? I mean, I didn't try to rape anyone. You're lying, nigga. Now, you be still. We're going to listen to what this boy has to say for himself. So, you claim you're innocent, is that right? That's right. Didn't anybody ever teach you to address a white man as sir? <laughs> now, let that be your first lesson. That blood on your mouth, boy. Wipe it off. Well, what do you say? Thank you. Thank you what? Thank you, sir. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you just one more time, boy. And I want you to think before you answer. You think real hard. Because if you tell us the truth, you've got nothing to be afraid of. But if you lie to us, you're going to be in more trouble than you ever dreamed of. Were you in that basement? I was in the basement. With a white girl? Yes, sir. 
I think we'll take him to jail now. Oh. You were alone with a white girl in the basement of the school, but you didn't try to do anything. Is that what you're saying? Is that what you expect us to believe, nigger? Well, speak up! <laughs> Only a coward would hit a defenseless boy. Is that what you're calling me, Patton? Yes, that's exactly what I'm calling you. You're a miserable yellow coward, Mr. Shipman. Just like every cheap bully in the world. And that goes for you too, Mr. Adam Kramer. For every one of you here. Now, do I make myself perfectly clear? until the Paragut police arrive. If you want to avoid a jail sentence, I would advise all of you people to leave at once. You admit it? That's too bad. You give us no choice. Like I said, you never want to be too sure of anything. Who are you? The name is Griffin, Sam Griffin. Well, what do you want? Nothing now. Then move aside. We got important business to attend to. What kind of business, Mr. Shipman? You folks aiming to do something to this boy? Look, Griffin, I don't know who you think you are, and I don't know why you brought this girl here. Because if you do, I think maybe there's something you ought to hear. It just might affect this business you're on. Tell him, Miss McDaniel. Tell him what you told me. It was a lie. What's that? What are you talking about? It was a lie. Everything. Everything I said about Joey. All of it. What the devil do you mean? She means her father told her to cover up for the nigger. That's what she's doing. Hell yes, that's it. We're wasting time. Girl, you listen here to me. Why would a girl go ahead and tell a story like that if it wasn't the truth? The fact is she was put up to it by our friend, Mr. Kramer here. Ain't that right, Adam? And this guy is crazy. Shut up! You go on. Your boy was getting desperate, Mr. Shipman. He was on the verge of losing everything he'd built up. So he threatened the girl. Told her he'd kill her father. Vern, don't listen to him. This man is crazy, I tell you. Is that right, girl? He promised me there wouldn't be any trouble. He said nothing would happen to the boy except he might be expelled. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this to happen. All right, honey, you go on back to the car, be all right. <laughs> Ella. Oh, Ella.
Right now, you good people are probably telling yourselves you were going to take this boy down to jail and see a little justice done. But that ain't the truth. You were going to kill this boy. You know it, and I know it. You know it all the rest of your lives. And you. You're thinking everything would have been just fine if you and me hadn't had our little personal difficulties. That ain't the truth, either. You began losing your grip on these people the second you got it. Because nobody, nobody can have the kind of power you thought you had, Mr. Kramer. Lies. Lies! I swear to God, this man's lying to you! Are you all crazy? Tell them the truth. Come on, tell them the truth. What about your Jew wife? Maybe they'd like to hear about that, eh? Tell them about the nigger woman you kissed in the mouth. You did? I got proof. Proof, you hear me? You hear what I'm saying? Griffin, you don't think for a minute you're fooling these people, do you? Because if you do, you're wrong. They're too smart for you and your felt. Believe me, I know them. I know they're too smart. They're with me, Griffin. They're with me, Griffin. With me. They'll laugh at you because you're nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Folks, they think they've got us scared, but they haven't. We aren't going to give up now. Not now. No, sir, not ever. You hear that, Griffin? Patton? You hear what I'm saying? You hear what I'm saying? Vern, you talk to them. They listen to you, Vern. Hey, Vern. A meeting tonight at the Palace Cafe, 7.30. Patton! You and your nigger better listen to this. We're going to show you you can't stop justice and right no matter what you do. This is just the beginning, only the beginning! Adam Kramer. You're going to get grass stains all over those trousers you don't get up. Come on. That's better. I figure your work in this town's about over. If you hurry, you can catch the bus to Farragut. They got trains there. If you're a little light on traveling money, I'd be proud to... You're sure now? Oh, I almost forgot. These belong to you. I wouldn't want to steal from you, boy. <laughs> 